All right, we'll try again. The guy's building a shed over the road here, and every time I press record, he starts grinding something. Let's do this quick. Got the new ARB compressor, the tweet double pump one. Uh, 37s are a pain to pump up. It takes like a half an hour to pump all of them up. So I'm not pissing my mates off anymore. We need a big compressor to pump these big tires up. I'm gonna try and put this in here. So there's a massive space behind here and it's enough space for um, uh, the ARB compressor because on track and Vic they've made up this um, little plate and if this works this is going to be so easy I'll peel this off um, it's stainless steel oh it's even yeah look at that um, that mounts in here the compressor mounts to that and all you'll see is a little nozzle coming out that's the plan this is the beastie here it's massive, it's huge. Like you pick it up, it's got a lot of weight to it. Um, the location I'm thinking about is gonna be here. So behind there, and I'm just looking at this little divot here and this here, that would be a good place for the outlets to go, I reckon. Maybe a switch on that side. I'll ditch that um, cigarette lighter and maybe put the outlet coming out of there. That's just what I'm thinking, or maybe the other way around, I don't know. But um, that's how it goes, the wiring. So there's lots of little bits and pieces to go with it. Do you know this? I've got two wires. You'd think ARB would just make a loom, like with one wire and one fuse. Although maybe the concept is if one compressor dies, the other one will keep running, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to do anything different. I'm just going to use that. Power is not a problem with this car because I've run an 8-gauge power cord um, to the Anderson back here and I can tap into that underneath here. So that's probably going to be the easy part. All right, let's start ripping the car apart. I've done this plenty of times before. So yeah, just start um, ripping the trims off around the outside. You start with this one by memory, take that out, um, and then it all just starts to, to come apart. So this was easy enough so far. Basically just start unbolting stuff, pulling everything out. I've been meaning to clean this part up for ages. It's a bit of a mess. Um, this has got Velcro and it just rips up with clips. Same with the side here, just pull the rubber out, rip that off with clips. There's some more nasty clips down here I've got to rip off. So I'm going to jump in there now and just do a bit of a brute strength and rip it off. I'll tell you, there's some smart people making some smart products for these cars. Look at that. Fits in perfectly. That's beautiful. These are all um, got threads there already, like it just wanted to happen. This one, it looks like just have to drill a hole through that bottom one and then they supply um, bolt and washer to go in there. This is, I'm so glad I bought that on track bracket. That's, that's awesome. All right, time to bolt this compressor to the plate. It came with bolt to bolt the plate to the car, which is supplied by on track, but it didn't come with bolts that are threaded in the, I think the 10 mils. Um, to bolt the compressor to the plate. So that was a bit annoying. I had to go through all my nuts and bolts, bits and pieces. Um, so I'll bolt that on and then bolt that to the car. <clears throat> so that was simple enough. Oh, gee, it's heavy. So I've bolted that up. I can see why you need some decent brackets here because the way, this must be like 10, 15 kilos. Um, I'll move, this out the way. move that out the way so you can see. I've mounted it with the air filters up because I guess that makes sense knowing that potentially water could get into this area. Below, I've got electrical down. So, tough call. <laughs> do you want to swallow water or do you want it to get your wires affected? Tough one. Anyway, it's, I've mounted it that way so that's the way it's going. Um, duck it in here. All right, I won't painfully make you watch the rest of that. I'll do these bolts up. If anyone out there has a 3D printer and has the, the time or energy, if you could design a 3D manifold to go down here, cover that vent, and then have a snorkel coming up behind this plate, you'll sell bucket loads of them. I'll help you sell them, I want one. But that is an inherent problem with this car. I don't know why they didn't fix that in the design, but the, the intake is too low. 
So, um, help me out, guys. <laughs> right, this year's all bolted up, so now to wire it up. Good little chat on the Y62 Patrol Modified Action Group about what size cable to hook this up with. This is what it comes with, two 40 amp fuses with, um, I don't know, what's that, 6mm or something like that. If I ran this to my lithium battery, which is just here, it would be so easy. Except, it would, like, if it does actually draw 80 amps, and the charger is only 25 amps, even if I'm running the car, it's still going to run the battery flat. So kind of putting it to the second battery is not going to work. So I've got to now go back to maybe tapping into my Anderson plug, which had the 8 gauge. Might have to do some maths to see whether that's right or not. Or do I just run a new feed straight back to the cranking battery and do it that way? There are so many wires in this car running back to front. There's probably another 100 kilos just worth of cable. I'm going to have a think about this. It's really bloody hot here. So uh, I've got to kill it for today. Go um, rehydrate and I'll come back another time and, and finish this off I think. But it's looking good. It's looking real good. Okay, time to connect this up. This is what we're doing here. So we've I've mounted this on the back of the union chip and projector relocation kit. Um, that will have power coming this side, come around here to the blue top battery, then the earth will come around as well. So something like that, that, and that. Now, it's all good in theory. Now I have to somehow get this all to work. So I've gone and got some um, little 25 mil or 425 mil squared wire. Um, so I'm going to solder these up. Now, I'll, so you can watch this, if you're not interested, you can just pass forward. How to do this. All right, so my airbox will be the platform here. I'm gonna heat this up with solder, and then, um, or fill that up with solder. Then I will um, dunk the wire in there. And as I'm heating it up, I don't want it to melt. So I've got these two bits of wood and the clamp. To hold that so now that's going to be heating up just the point um, oh I need to strip this so let's do that first something like this is the problem about doing stuff for YouTube I kind of tend to do stuff quickly anyway this is how I do it I'm sure there's people that can do this better and if I wasn't rushing it, I probably would, but this is what's going to happen today. Now, there'll be a group to say, I should tin this first. But if I tin it, I find it's very hard to get it to fit into the lug. So I'm not going to tin it, I'm just going to fill it up with solder and just dunk it. And then I've checked that my heat shrink will go over this lug afterwards. So that's that's the plan. I'll go get the soldering iron. So a little bit of solder on there, so I've got conductivity in there. Just basically hold it on and fill the sucker with solder. Uh, you want to have your cable close and ready to go because when this is molten, there's no time for stuffing around. And oh, it's leaking out the bottom. That's not cool. That's not what I wanted to happen. Oh, that's making it look all messy. Oh, don't do what Dave did. Damn it. Alright, new plan. That's how I make Anderson plugs, no trouble at all. And then I would have just had to pop that in, and Bob's your uncle. <sighs> Alright. Alright, that didn't go to plan. So, let's do this a different way, I think. 
Yeah, that sucks. All right, new plan. Let's see if this works. I'm sure you could crimp this if you had the right tools, but I don't. So I'm gonna do it this way. I kinda like the way this is going. All right, it's just started to pull out the back. I'm gonna keep the heat on there and tuck her in. That looks all right. Oh, I did pull out a bit around the outside, didn't I? I can clean that up with a soldering iron. All right, it's about 9.30 at night, Saturday night. Kids are in bed, wife's watching TV. So I'm allowed back out here to play with the car again. And I'm making some progress. Check this out. So I found the wiring and I put in this earth bus bar. Now that is a decent earth. And that's gonna give me earthing points for everything now, <laughs> for what I'm gonna want in power wires at the back of the car. Now I was searching everywhere for this plug. So that's the main power wire. Um, so that's what's got these two um, big, power cables which is going to go to my massive 4 BNS that I've got here and let's see if I can get the picture here there's a grommet right down the bottom here can you see it I don't know oh there we go yeah so that's going through there um, and so we're left with this other little clip here and I've been hunting high and low I thought I lost it turns out there's a red wire, purple wire, black wire. The red wire is not even used, so it's just purple and black. Black's obviously earth. Purple is power for the switch wire. So I've been hunting for this fancy plug, and look, I don't even need it. So I'm just gonna cut that off, uh, put it straight to my switch board that I've got here, which will go up there or wherever I'm gonna put it. Um, and we're, we're back on track again, so all right, back to work, let's get. This project is still going. I can't believe it's still going. I thought it'd be like the front compressor, just chuck it in, hook it up, put power, job done. But by the time you get the power all the way back here, get the right cable, fit it all in, terminate everything, work out what's going on with Earths. I'll show you like how this has ended up down the bottom here. Uh, we'll switch over to the Osmo. So this is what it's looking like so far. Um, all plugged in. That's my earth bus bar down there that I've put in so I can extend and have extra earth for later on. The loom that comes with this is way too long so I've cut that down to make it much shorter and like I was saying this is the panel I want to put in as well and it actually works <laughs> and spats on the counter the compressor. So um, that I need to fit in that location somewhere. Now it's just um, um, working out how many of these little extension pieces. These don't come with a compressor, so when you buy them from or on track, ask them to chuck some in. Um, Matt Weber tells me you need at least two, maybe three, depending on how much you want it to come out. I half thought about getting like a flexible one so I could put it wherever I want, but I've got another plan, um, which I'll make part two of this video, and I want an air system where I can basically connect all my tires um, to a lead, uh, set the PSI at 45 or whatever it is and it will just everything will inflate and once I'm talking to a company that does a product called Rugged Connect so um, if that goes ahead I'll do a part two of this because then it will be the ultimate air compressor for a full drive having lots of air um, twin compressor back here be able to pump up all my tires to a set PSI um, you can deflate them all at the same time, so set it to 15, walk off until it's done, and it will turn off by itself. So that's why I want the rugged connect for. I'm nearly there, just got to finish this up, and um, we're, we're looking good. Double compressor in the back, single compressor in the front, both ARB, both on the same car, pumping up the same size tyres that have been both dropped down to the same pressure. We've got to race them now and we know it's going to be better 
the twin compressor, but how much better? Let's try. So STL Life, this is my poor man's tire pressure sensor. It's even solar power, 42 bucks on Wish. You can see there, 18, 18 PSI for both these tires. Even though one looks a little bit more pumped up than the other, they're exactly the same PSI, both on 18. Here we go, start now. Three, two, one, go. So we know that rear compressor will go faster, but we just need to know how much faster. Alright, do a one minute check. Smack on 40. One minute fifty. Alright, what's yours sitting on now? I don't know. Two minutes. So if this compressor is twice as good, and it was one minute fifty to get the rear one pumped up to forty, would that mean it would be three minutes forty for the front one? We're at 2 minutes 40-ish now. Makes sense. There you go, 1 minute 50 versus 3 minutes 30. So it's almost twice as good, pretty close.